it, you know, in a way I agree. If you think about that stuff like uh, the size of the audience and how much it will appeal to a reader, you go nuts fairly quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but on the other hand, I think that I think where Mark and I differ a little bit is is I think in a weird way the condition sort of commercially for fiction has bears a little bit on the aesthetics of writing right now because at least at least the generation that I think of myself as part of was raised on television, which means that at least I was raised to view television as more or less my main kind of artistic snorkel to the universe. And I think television, which is a commercial art that's a lot of fun, that requires very little of the recipient of the art, I think affects, the, affects what people are looking for in various kinds of art and I think um, can make the sort of fiction which, if I can lump a bit, I think all three of us do stuff that's at least harder than average, weird, requires some work to read. What's interesting to me is the very phenomenon that perhaps demographically cuts into our audience is a big part of sort of what's going on in the country that I think fiction writers are trying to capture in some way. Okay. Fiction for me, as mostly as a reader, is a very weird double-edged sword. Um, on the one hand, it can be difficult and it can be redemptive and morally instructive and all the good <coughs> stuff we learn in school. On the other hand, it's supposed to be fun. It is a lot of fun, and what, what drew me into writing was mostly memories of really fun, rainy afternoons spent with a book. Um, it, was a kind of a, it was a kind of a relationship. Yeah. I think part of the fun for me was being part of some kind of exchange between consciousnesses, a way for human beings to talk to each other about stuff that we normally can't talk about. Like, we're sure not going to be able to talk about this stuff here, you know? Um, the, thing that, the thing that interests me in, in a lot of the stuff I think that I do has to do with, I think, a lot commercial entertainment, its efficiency, its sheer, del its sheer ability to deliver um, pleasure in large doses changes people's, changes people's relationship to art and entertainment. It changes what an audience is looking for. I would argue it changes us in deeper ways than that and that some of the ways that commercial culture and commercial entertainment affects human beings is one of the things that I sort of think serious or arty fiction ought to be doing right now. There's this part that's, that's, um, that makes you feel full. There's this part that, um, that is redemptive and instructive, where when you read something, it's not just a light. You go, my god, that's me. You know, I've lived like that. I've felt like that. I'm not alone in the world. I mean, you can get, you can get very kind of abstract in the way you talk about it. What's tricky for me is, see, it, w it would be one thing if everybody was absolutely delighted watching TV 24-7, but we have as a culture not only an enormous daily watching rate, but we have a tremendous cultural contempt for TV. I mean, from Newton, Newton minus the vast wasteland has become kind of culture-wide such that now TV that makes fun of TV is itself popular TV. There's this way in which we who are watching a whole lot are also aware that we're missing something, that there's something else, there's something more, while at the same time, because television is really darn easy, um, you sit there, you don't have to do very much. I mean, it's, it's, it's not any kind of tactic or whatever, but I think, at least for me, the way I am as a writer comes very much out of what, what I sort of want as a reader and, and what sort of got me off, you know, when I was reading. And a lot of it has to do with, good Lord, I'm really stretching myself. I'm really having to think and process and feel in ways I don't normally feel. And the book, the book has motivated me to do that. Ten years ago, I was reading a lot more avant-garde stuff, and I thought it was very cool. Um, one of my complaints right now um, is that be because I think commercial entertainment has conditioned readers to want um, kind of more easy fun, I think avant-garde and art fiction has sort of relinquished the field and is now, basically I don't read much contemporary avant-garde stuff because it's hellaciously unfun. A lot of really serious well, literary stuff. Was it hellaciously unfun yeah, five years ago and ten well, years ago? Well, I mean, the stuff I was reading ten years ago was avant-garde stuff from like the 60s and early 70s, okay. which as far as I can see was kind of the, the heyday, um, at least of contemporary avant-garde stuff. But these days a lot of it is very academic and cloistered um, and, full, and basically written for critics and college teachers and PhD students. And it's something that I, I, I feel a lot more strongly about that than I do about TV.